you look at my clock in my office, you'll think it's five hours faster than it is. <laughs> a lot of stuff on NPR today about anti-Semitism. There's a lot of anti-Semitism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything particularly jump out to you? No, it's just, you know, Kanye and his group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I forget yeah. what he said. So I love Hitler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he yeah. did get thrown off Twitter. Yeah, he did get thrown off Twitter. Which is, which is a, a but not in itself. Right. Seriously. Right. Right. Well, these days, it is, yeah. Yeah, you have to try, you have to try. I don't know, isn't Elon Musk doing like a shuffle play with Twitter right now? Like, did he buy the company? He's now fighting with like uh, his staff. Everyone, it's everyone. Yeah. Including me. If you look at my Twitter, there's a little bit yeah. of fighting Elon Musk on this. <laughs> but, uh. Personally, I always go with the statement, Twitter is stupid, and Instagram is Twitter for well, that's uh, that is real. But what does that make TikTok? <laughs> TikTok is people who basically want to make a funny video. Fair, fair. Instant serotonin. What do you think, Joe? You got like a minute? Yeah. Four, four. Cool. Every clock here is wrong. Or I guess every clock here is just different. Who did we talk to about this? Her watch is pretty accurate. I don't know. Who's in charge here? My, my, my clock at home is, always, is an hour late because I make a lot of money. <laughs> hey, Rob. Chavez. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, it's good to see you all. Um, as we have the opportunity to do when we, we come to lead services like this, uh, Zach, Joey, and I spent some time this afternoon uh, visioning, saying what, what is our intention, what is our kavanah for the service, what do we want to put out into the world, and what do we hope you receive. I think for us this has been a, a time of uh, journeys. We've really, we've sort of been going to somewhere been rushing all week long to get to this moment. So what we wanted to do, especially with this week's Torah portion being Parshat Vayetze, Vayetze meaning, and he went out, what we want to do is give you the opportunity to go on your own journey tonight, to come and receive perhaps, to feel the comfortable destabilization that can only come about in a community that you really love and trust. So this is our gift to you. We wish you a Shabbat Shalom. We'll start with a little bit of singing. You don't even need to know the words, just the eye, die, die.
So we'll turn together to page three as we light our Shabbat candles. I didn't ask anything. Could you light our Shabbat candle right now? Sure. Would you like Emily's or this one? Please. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm not right in front of me. I guess I need to read. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. We join together in prayer on page two. Baruch together in body or spirit. Our prayer service is also a journey, which begins with a reminder of creation. We say together the Kiddush on page 5, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Meri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu Yitzvotam Yeah. 
Shabbat. It is good to praise Adonai, to sing hymns to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your steadfast love at daybreak, your faithfulness each night. With pen stringed harp, with voice of fire together, you have gladdened me by your works, Adonai. I shout for joy at your hand. How great are your works, Adonai, how very subtle your design. A brute cannot know, a fool cannot understand this. Together we read, the righteous bloom like a day. They thrive like a cedar in Lebanon. Planted in the house of Adonai, they flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are full of sap and freshness. Attesting that Adonai is upright, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Every crack is also an opening. When in the midst of great change, it is helpful to remember how a chick is born. From the view of the chick, it is a terrifying struggle. Confined in a dark shell, the chick eats all its food and stretches to the edges of the world. It begins to feel hungry and cramped. Eventually, the chick begins to starve and feels suffocated and confined. Finally, its own growth begins to crack the shell and blinding light comes through. The world as the chick knows it is coming to an end. Its sky is falling. As the chick begins to wriggle through the cracks, hungry and frightened, it must feel like it is dying. Yet, once everything it has relied on falls away, the chick is born. It doesn't die, but it falls into the world. The lesson is profound. Transformation always involves the falling away of things we have relied on. And we are left with the feeling that the world as we know it is coming to an end because it is. 
It must. Because only so will a new world be born. We welcome the angels that join us on Shabbat, these celestial angels on page 24 with Shalom Alecha. <coughs> Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Just as we've taken some time to welcome these celestial angels, these, uh, these angels that join us on Shabbat are also here in the room with us right now. So we take a few moments to look around, maybe find someone you don't know, and say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, friends on Zoom. Shabbat Shalom, Zoom friends. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. On page 26. Ikada Ali Kada Sheme Rabba Ali, Me Almadi Brahu Teviam Lich Malhute, Behaye Honu Yome Hom, Ukhaye de Hom in Israel, Bagala Bagala, Ubisma Hakari, Vime Ru. Shmei 
nasse. Vita dar, vita le, vita lau, shemede kudusha vinu. Le'en la min kol berchata v'shirata, tush berchata v'nechem ata, dao mihim ram re'alma, v'im eru amen. We rise together in body or spirit for the Baruch Hu on page 28. responsively at the bottom of page 29. O oh God, you are as near as the very air we breathe, yet farther than the farthest most star. We yearn to greet you. We seek the light and warmth of your presence, that we say you are here. O oh, let our desire be so strong that we tear the veil that keeps you from our sight. Let your light release our darkness and reveal your glory and joy of your presence. Page 31, we read together. 
Praise to you, our nigh our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season lie. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, our nigh our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch atah Adonai.
responsibly at the top of page 39. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot. That wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness. That there is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together. This is a repeat after me song. Mi ha mocha, mi ha mocha, ba'elim Adonai, ba'elim Adonai, mi ha mocha, mi ha mocha, medar ba'kodesh, medar ba'kodesh, no. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will.
We rise once more in body or spirit on page 46 for the Amida. hard week for some of us. It's been a hard week for many of us. And that's why every Friday night we take the opportunity to pray for healing. Whether it's healing of the body or healing of the spirit or healing of the mind. If there are any names that are on your heart tonight that you'd like to share that we can all hold together in community, I invite you to do so now. Shabbat can be found on page 253.
we have a gift for you. It's the holiday season, after all. It's, it's a good time to give someone a gift. For those of you who are parents among us, this might be an especially precious gift. It's that greatest <coughs> gift of a little bit of Shabbos space. Space to fill with your own prayers, your own intentions. You can use the words you find in the book or those words which you find inscribed. Rashi can't get past the first word of this parsha without a question. Really, really, the first word, Vayetze, he went out, and Rashi already says, why? Why does the text say Vayetze? Why not Vayelech? Why not another word for, for someone leaving? Why Vayetze? Well, he answers himself in a Midrash. When a righteous person leaves a given city, they make an impression. This is what the philosopher among us might call the presence of absence. Jean-Paul Sartre tells a story in his uh, 1943 book, Being in Nothingness, about going to a cafe for an appointment with his friend Pierre. And Sartre is running late, so when he steps into the cafe, he is struck by what he calls uh, fullness of being. Bales of cigarette smoke waft through the thick air, and patrons lean forward, hunching into their booths. A low roll of voices and the clinking of plates and saucers bring this place to life, and the scene is reflected in the mirror on a wall. Sartre scans and faces and the objects in the rooms, and he's looking for his friend Pierre, and each thing that he looks at is centered in his awareness for just a moment. Before he passes over it and moves on, he realizes it's not Pierre. Each face and each object retreats into the ground of the setting, no longer asserting itself on Sartre's awareness. He says, I look at the room, the patrons, and I say, he is not here. Pierre's absence, his nothingness, as Sartre calls it, becomes the focus of his attention. The absence itself takes on a kind of being since there is nothing in the place where Sartre expected there to be something. Sartre demonstrates how this absence has its own presence in the world, uh, as real and substantial as the opposite. How does absence, a word that means the state of not being present, come to embody this very concept of presence? We say, Sartre writes, I suddenly saw that he was not there. We are struck by the non-entity, its negative nature, its nothingness. It is precisely what we notice. It is not the absence of presence that we are seeing, it is an absence in presence. We see this presence of absence. In his autobiography, The Words, Sartre remembers his first experience of this feeling of the presence of absence. His grandfather made a pronouncement which pierced me to the heart. Someone is lacking here. It's Sinu. In the center of a tumultuous circle, I saw a pillar, Monsieur Sanu himself, absent in flesh and blood, and this astonishing absence transfigured him. A great many people connected with the Institute were absent, but only Monsieur Sanu was lacking. Aviva Gottlieb Zorenberg comments that the imprint, the full awareness of the un indispensable person is known only after he has removed himself from his place. 
Zornberg intuits that just as Rashi speaks of a void left behind as Jacob begins his journey, perhaps there's a void within Jacob too. As he goes out of his place, a vacuum separates him from his origins, and there's a kind of necessary detachment. In this void, in this vacuum, is the absence of the presence that Jacob once knew. And in that absence, Jacob becomes who he is meant to be. When we are first introduced to Jacob, he is described as an Ishtam, Yushev Ohalim, a simple man who dwells in the tent. On the first night after his leaving, when the sun, set, Jake, when the sun sets, Jacob finds himself alone in the dark. <coughs> the Torah tells us that that he encounters the place where he is to spend the night. He takes a stone as a pillow, and he sleeps, and as he sleeps, he has a vision of a sulam. In that place, beyond the edge of everything he knows, Jacob dreams of a ladder, planted on the ground with its head reaching towards the heaven. He watches as angels ascend and descend on the ladder, and God appears next to him, telling him that the place where he rests his head is holy. God tells Jacob that he and his descendants will spread out to the west, east, north, and south, and the whole world will be blessed by them. God promises Jacob to remain with him and to return him once more to this place. When Jacob awakes from his sleep, he declares, God was in this place, and I did not know. He then calls this place a name which is familiar to us, or at least it should be, Beit El, Beth El, the house of God. Jacob encounters an unfamiliar place in the deep darkness, and there, he makes a home for God. In the absence of everything that Jacob has ever known, he experiences the presence of God. It is these moments, when we feel lost most acutely, that we begin to build ourselves back up again. In 20 years in Haran, Jacob marries four wives, has 12 children, and amasses a fortune. But first, he must undertake a journey. And at the very outset of that journey, he is confronted with the presence of absence of everything and everyone he leaves behind. So too, on these circuitous journeys that each of us embark on in our lives, we experience the presence of those who are absent. We experience the presence of those who are no longer with us, or those we wish could be here. It is these precious moments that we too can be present to that which is absent. In doing so, we have the opportunity to build our own Beit El, to build our own Beth El, to build our own house of God. In doing so, each of us can realize that wherever so we may go, whatever place we might go from or come to, we are not alone. We're never alone. And I hope that you make this Beth El your home. <laughs> This weight is stringing us along. Just know you're not alone. So I'm gonna make this place your
each of us, Elenu, to make this place feel like home. We rise together in body or spirit on page 282. <laughs> when the world is not complete, when those who wa once brought wholeness to our lives are gone. They're gone and nothing but memory can fill the emptiness that their passing leaves behind. But memory can tell us only what we were in the company of those we loved. It cannot tell us what each of us must now become. Yet no one is really alone. Those who live no more echo still within our thoughts and words, and what they did is part of what we have become. We do best homage to our dead by living our lives more fully, even in the shadow of our loss. For each of our lives is worth the life of the entire world, and each one is the breath of the ultimate one, whose life, now ended, brought us closer to the source of life, in whose unity no one is alone, and every life finds purpose. We remember the recent passings of Judge Richard Jerome Israel, Molly Granoff, Adam, David Gilstein, and Benjamin Cooper. We also remember the yard sites of Elaine Buckler, Phyllis Corwin, Martin Fivish, Ron Folk, Barbara A. Hahn, Martin Kalman, Milton Lewis, Howard Nachbar, Jack Warren Palin, George Rubin, Harry Schlossberg, Joseph S. Sinclair, Sylvia Rudderman, Betsy Brown Ruzi, Michael Jeffrey White, and Bob Sussman, as well as. <coughs> Words of the Morris Cottage can be found on page 294. Amen. <laughs> Vita dar, vita le, vita lal, shamed kudisha, bricho, le ela minko virchata vishirata, tush bechata vinechemata, dami ran belma, vim ruhami, yehe shlama rava min shemaya, vechaim alenu bel ko israel, vim ruhami, o se shalom vim rama, hu ya se shalom, alenu bel ko israel, vim ruhami. 
May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us and to all Israel, to which we say. Amen. Amen. afterwards. Uh, we have Torah study tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, it's a great Parsha. We've got a lot of fun. Uh, <clears throat> there are so many fun things going on in Temple. You can look online, but the one that I want to make sure you know about is our Hanukkah celebration, which is not this Sunday, but the Sunday after. Correct. Ezekiel's, wheel, Ezekiel's oh yes, this Sunday is the Sisterhood's oh, book goodness. event. Which is going to be so tasty. So you've read the recipes, you know they're delicious. Come and try for yourself. <laughs> we'll go out just how we came in with a nigun. This is the nigun kislev. We'll be singing it all month long. <laughs> in the foyer at Borsam Nash. Thank you again for all our friends on Zoom for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, um. Yeah.